this video will demonstrate how to create an interactive image slider or card carousel using only pure javascript whether you want to showcase your portfolio products highlight your latest blog posts or simply create an eye-catching visual content to your website this image slider is the one that you're looking for let's take a look at the project's demo it's a simple project where we are dynamically adjusting the position of the card elements in response to mouse movements. This interactive functionality enhances your user experience by creating a visually engaging and interactive interface. Without further ado, let's start. Hello and Namaste everyone. This is Jitsar with Coding Design. Welcome to our channel. If you are new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have already created six different unique sliders and carousels that you may find interesting. I have included the playlist link in the video description. You can check out. Let's create a stable file. And I just want to change the title. For the title, I'm giving interactive animated card slider, or you can call it image carousel. So let's create a deep with class name slider. Within that, I'm creating order list with class name cards. And let's create list item with class name card. Within that, I'm creating image tag. For the source, let's give images slash. Let's give this image. As you can see within the same folder, I do have another folder name images. And within that folder, there are nine different images. And just below that image, let's create another div element. And let's keep their h1 heading along with some paragraph that represents rating now with the help of live server extension let's open this index.html file in our default browser in your browser as you can see this is the result now let's create a standard css file and provide link within that head tag As you can see, we are getting that huge image. So let's give proper size for that. For our image, I'm giving height of 22 rem. And also I just want to give rounded corners. For that, let's give border radius of one rem. And for our inverter selector, I'm giving box sizing to border box. So that whenever you are providing any border padding, in that case, all the complicated calculations will be handled by browser itself. Browser by default, for our body, it gives the margin of 8 pixel. So let's give margin to 0. And for our font family, I'm providing pop-ins. If it's not available, then we'll give sans serif. Now let's try the div with class name slider. For the class slider, I'm providing the maximum width of 100%. For the height, let's give this 100 viewports height. For the background, I just want to give this image. So I'm just providing that path of our image. I'm just using background shot and techniques. So within the same line, I can provide position of our image. I'm giving right. And if you give the forward slash, then you can provide background size. I'm just giving 200%. And for our background repeat, I'm giving no repeat. And for the background attachment, let's give it to fixed. Now you can duplicate that same class slider and bring it down there. Let's provide before pseudo element. And for our content, I am giving empty string. It's necessary to provide, otherwise you won't be able to create that before pseudo element. And for the position, let's give absolute. Now you need to provide the position of relative for our parent element. Now for the before pseudo element, let's give the width and height of 100%. That means it will occupy the same width and height of its parent element. And for the background color, I'm providing this black color with some transparent value or alpha value. And for the backdrop filter, let's give the blur value of 50 pixels. So it's kind of a trick with the help of which you will be able to provide blur background image. So why am I taking this approach? It's because there is another CSS property which is called filter where you can provide blur value. But doing so, you will blur whole elements including its children. It's not only the one solution, okay? There are different approaches that you can take. Now let's tell another list with class name cards.
let's give the position of absolute there are two reasons for providing position of absolute i just want to bring that card element in front of our blur background image and second reason is that with the help of javascript code later on we'll dynamically change that left position so we just need that position of absolute now you can remove that bullet point by providing list style to none and also let's give padding left and right to 1.6 frame now let's start list element with class name card for the class card let's give the text color to white for the cursor i just want to give pointer so that when you take your mouse near to that card element you will be able to get that pointing hand icon and also when you hover your card i just want to change its, its scale let's give the scale to 1.08 but as you can see there is no any smooth transition so for the class card let's give the transition and for duration i'm giving 0.4 second now let's style this as on heading and paragraph before that for the div that is within our class card let's give the display to flex and also align items to center so that it will bring your content vertically center and for our ads on heading i just want to change its font size along with its font weight and also you can select this same code and duplicate it now instead of that h1 let's style paragraph element and now i'm just changing its font size and also let's give font weight to bold and also i just want to give some space between this heading and paragraph for that you can just give justify content to space between And also I have changed my mind for our H1 heading let's give text transform to capitalize so that each and every starting letter of our heading that will start with capital letter now you can duplicate the same card element now you just need to change source of your image heading of your card and also paragraph and that represents ratings so you can see these are the different card elements with images but now you can see you will be able to scroll vertically but we want horizontal scroll effect for that for our class cards let's give display to flex let's give gap of 1.6 frame and also we can bring these whole cards exactly at the center of our browser for that for our class slider you can give display to flex justify content to center that will bring horizontally center and in order to bring vertically center you can give align items to center as you can see now you'll be able to scroll horizontal as well as vertically but i just want to prevent vertical scroll so for that you can just give overflow x to auto and now you'll be able to get that horizontal scroll now when you move your mouse cursor within that slider we need to detect its position and adjust our card position along with that mouse movement so in order to achieve that we need to take the help of javascript code there are very few lines of javascript code so i'm just using internal javascript Within that script tag, with the help of document.query selector, I am selecting two DOM elements which are the class slider and the class cards and I am storing within different variables. And in order to detect movement of our mouse cursor, whenever you are moving within that slider, for that, for the slider, I am adding the event listener. And I'm listening to the mouse move event and for the second parameter we'll just give the callback function I'm passing that e parameter that represents the event object as soon as when there is any movement in mouse we'll just execute this function so within that function let's create a variable name scroll width and I'm assigning e dot page x with the help of this code you'll be able to get x coordinate of your mouse related to entire document and we'll divide by sliders width so I'm just giving their slider dot client width that will give you the width of your slider but it doesn't include any kind of padding but if there is vertical scroll bar then it will include that vertical scroll bar and now hold this result will multiply with you can take that same sliders client width and subtract it from the cards client width i hope you just got it now we can take this scroll width variable and set our left css property to cards element for that you can write cards.style.left and you can assign 
and within that you can pass dollar curly bracket and you can just keep that scroll width variable and also you need to provide their specific unit i'm just giving pixels as our css unit so before that i just want to show you what kind of value we are storing within our scroll width variable so let's check it in our console as you can see as soon as when you move your mouse you will be able to get that scroll width value and there are lots of decimal digits so i just want to round it to one decimal place for that you can just give their dot to fix and within that i'm just giving one on your browser did you see that this is the exact value that i want so you can just take this same code and paste it there on your browser did you see that based on movement of your mouse cursor you will be able to change your all the image cards position but at the bottom you can see you will be able to get that horizontal scroll bar i just want to hide it for that for our class slider as you can see i have given their overflow of x to auto so because of that we are getting horizontal scroll bar in order to hide that for the class slider you can provide their scroll bar pseudo element with webkit prefix and you can just give display to none it's as simple as that Although we are dynamically adjusting our image card's position based on movement of our mouse cursor, but there isn't any kind of smooth transition. So for that, for our class cards, we can give the transition property. For transition property, we are giving left. It's because we are changing left CSS property, okay? For the transition duration, I'm giving two seconds. And for our timing function, let's give this cubic bezier value. Or you can generate by yourself with the help of different online tools. On your browser, now you'll be able to see that beautiful transition. As you can see, we are changing our left CSS value. So in order to improve our browser performance, you can give another CSS property which is called will change and will give value left. And on your browser, you can see this beautiful interactive image sliders. And also I have noticed that we just don't need that justify content to center because I just don't want to start our image slider from the center. Now you can see we are dynamically adjusting the position of our image slider based on the mouse cursor movements. So we just detect our mouse cursor movements and based on that we are dynamically adjusting the position of our image slider. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did learn something, smash that like button. If you have any kind of queries, let me know in the comment box. Share this video if you think someone needs it. And also, if you haven't already ate, hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell icon. Remember, there is always more to learn. So keep learning.